Welcome to Planetary Imaging. Which Barlow? There are many variables involved in planetary imaging. Exposure time, gain, focal ratio, total number of frames to grab, and so on. One way to find out what works best is to just try everything. But with so many parameters, that could take forever. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find which focal ratio is close to optimal. So that will be one less variable that you have to worry about. The focal ratio, or F number, is the focal length of your telescope divided by the diameter of your telescope in the same units. This scope is 5 inches F10, so the focal length is 50 inches. We don't change the diameter of our telescope, but we can change the effective focal length from 50 inches to 100 inches by using a 2x Barlow. The size of the image that you get depends only on the focal length. If you double the focal length, the image will double in size, in width, and in height. Consequently, the light is spread out over four times the area. This telescope, with no eyepiece, will project an upside-down image on the paper, which comes into focus about here. It will have a certain size and brightness. Inserting the 2x Barlow, and the image will double in size and become one quarter as bright. Notice that when we change the effective focal length from 50 inches to 100 inches, that we don't have to move the paper back an extra 50 inches. When you're dealing with an optical system that's made up of multiple lenses and mirrors, it's nice to compare it to a single lens system. A single 5 inch lens with a 100 inch focal length will give us the same size and brightness of an image. So for photographic purposes, what we have here is a 5 inch f20 lens. Removing the Barlow, and it becomes a 5 inch f10 lens. To show you the importance of focal ratio, let's consider using a lens to burn some ants. Would you want to use this tiny lens here, which is around f2, or this 5 inch scope, which is f10? Well, it turns out this lens will burn ants while well, this one won't. The 5 inch lens will collect way more light, but it spreads it out over an even greater area. So the solar power per unit area would be less. You'd be able to illuminate way more ants, but they would all survive. For photography, we'll replace ants with pixels. The amount of light that each pixel gets depends on the focal ratio. The size of the telescope is irrelevant. This might seem counterintuitive, I once worked with an optical engineer who wouldn't believe me until I brought in this telescope lens and showed him how we couldn't kill any ants with it. We could project the sun onto our hand, but we'd just get a big image of the sun. It didn't hurt. But of course, you can hurt yourself with a lens that has a small enough focal ratio. On a side note, please don't point your F10 SET at the sun without a solar filter. You won't burn your hand, but you might ruin your telescope. Inside, your primary mirror is around F2. It shines the light onto the secondary mirror, which is convex, which spreads the light out so that overall you end up F10. But inside the telescope, there's going to be a lot of solar power being directed onto that secondary mirror. And if you're not pointing directly at the sun, it might focus on the corrector plate. I don't know if anything bad will happen, but you might destroy some coatings at the very least. Different webcams have different size pixels, different numbers of pixels, but they all have about the same sensitivity. Today's chips detect between 50 and 75 percent of the photons that hit them. You won't be able to someday buy a webcam that's five times more sensitive. You can't detect more than all of the photons. We can use Barlow lenses, power mates, eyepiece projection, or even focal reducers to change the number of pixels we get of our target. If we have Jupiter spread out across 200 pixels, then Jupiter will have a radius of 100 pixels and we end up with around 30,000 pixels. If we call each one of these pixels a sample, we can say that we took 30,000 samples of Jupiter for each frame. You may have heard the terms oversampling and undersampling. This has to do with the resolution that is possible with your scope, 
and I'll get to that in a minute. For now, I want to consider the amount of light each pixel gets. By changing the focal ratio of your scope with different Barlow lenses, you change the number of pixels you have of Jupiter. Let's say that we have Jupiter with a 200 pixel diameter and we can use an exposure of 1 50th of a second. We can collect 50 frames per second and in one minute we end up with 3000 frames. Now let's spread Jupiter over 2000 pixels instead of 200. We end up with 100 times as many pixels and each pixel will get 1 100th as much light. We will need 100 times longer exposure which means we need 2 seconds per frame instead of 1 50th of a second per frame. We end up with 30 frames in a minute instead of 3000 frames. On the flip side, we can shrink Jupiter to give us more light per pixel, which will allow for even smaller exposure times. If our camera is capable, we can get hundreds of frames per second. Obviously, our picture won't have as much resolution with fewer pixels. When you read about under or over sampling, the issue is resolution. If you'd like to learn about it, then Google Airy Disk. Wikipedia has a formula for the size of the airy disk you get when a star is projected onto your webcam sensor. It is 1.22 times fnum times lambda. fnum is the focal ratio and lambda is the wavelength of the light. Browsing the internet, I found that we want the airy disk to have a diameter of at least 2 pixels. I also found a rule of thumb that says our optimal focal ratio should be 5 times the pixel size in microns. You can get this rule of thumb formula by using a lambda for green light and having the airy disk have a 3 pixel diameter. Green light is in the middle of the visible light spectrum. There are factors though that make me suspect this analysis may be off a bit. Color cameras have the pixels grouped into 2x2 two two clusters. We take thousands of pictures and stack them and we can use drizzle. These things are not included in the way they came up with this formula. Still. I found the formula to be very helpful. For one thing, the form of the equation tells me that the focal ratio goes with the pixel size. If you double the pixel size, then you should double the focal ratio. Even if you use a different multiplier in the optimal focal ratio formula, you will want to change the focal ratio proportional to the pixel size if you want things to stay the same when you change cameras. Using this formula, I was able to come up with this interesting equation. The diameter of Jupiter in pixels is equal to the diameter of your telescope in millimeters. This equation assumes that you have a focal ratio of 5 times the pixel size in microns and that Jupiter is 41.25 arc seconds in the sky. This is a typical size for Jupiter, though it does get a tad larger at opposition. In summary, you want your focal ratio to be approximately 5 times the pixel size in microns. This is only to get you close though. Besides, most of us don't have adjustable Barlow lenses, and they don't come in all sizes. If you compute that you need a 1.8x Barlow, then you will probably be stuck with a 2x Barlow. If your webcam has pixels that are 4 microns, then you should aim for 5 times 4 or 20 for your focal ratio. If your telescope is f10, then a 2x Barlow will give you f20. If your webcam has 2 micron pixels, then you want 5 times 2 equals 10, so your F10 telescope won't even need a Barlow lens. This is the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more, then watch some of my other videos. In my Equipment Needed video, I talk about the main things you will need to do planetary imaging. I talk about some of the webcams that are available in my Which Webcam video. In Exposure, Gain, Etc., I tell you how to quickly find optimal capture settings. I have more videos that you can get to by clicking on the bottom right quadrant.